What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here, and let's continue on with our turn-based combat tutorial series. And in the last video, which was my last one of 2020 actually, we closed it off with you guys having to do a bit of holiday homework. So I said that you should add in all of the animations that, that you're planning to use for your for your version of this tutorial or if you're using the animations um, that I provided for that particular part of the series um, to add those extra animations in. And I did say the attack and defend at least but I've gone ahead and added in the attack animation, a defend animation as well as a hurt and a miss animation and then we have a funny one we have the to defend animation here. So to better illustrate how this looks, let's go into our player sequence and we have them all lined up here in a single sequence, but each animation has its own space here. They're not overlapping and so they're all blocked out. So here we go. Let's have a look at our first one. We have our idle animation, which we did together. And the next animation that we have is the attack animation. Now, before I continue, it, I should make it a point that it doesn't matter which order the animations are in. That, that's inconsequential. It's, what's important is the code that accesses these animations. That's what's important to us. Because like we said in the previous one, we are going to control where this playhead, where the yellow bar, the playhead will be at at all times. So it doesn't matter where your animations are. If it's different to mine, then that's totally okay. Um, if you have a different number of animations, that's okay too. You'll just have to make sure that you put in the appropriate information. So the start and the end of that particular part of the sequence. If you've forgotten some of this stuff, that's okay. We'll be going through it together in this video. So like I said, I have the attack animation here. And then I have the miss animation. The miss animation is really just something basic. It's because they, the creator of this sprite pack did include some sort of miss animation, um, mainly because we don't really see that. We don't really need it. It's not an important in, uh, animation per se. And the miss animation as well as the hurt animation are basically the same thing. I just made the middle frames different to each other. So the miss one is white and the hurt animation is red. And they kind of do like this slide backwards. Um, and then we have the to defend animation here. Now what this does, what the goal of the to defend animation is just as it sounds, we are going to use it as a transition. We are going to transition from the idle animation through to the defend animation. And this one actually plays a little bit of that before going into what I would better define as the defend idle animation. And that's just looping these three frames together. All right, so that's that's what our sequence looks like. If yours looks different, that's totally fine because what we actually need is in our object, if we go to the O player, what we actually need are the start and ends of these animation sequences, right? So I actually, I've already done this because that was part of our homework. I've already gone ahead and done that. So if you haven't added in this extra information, that's totally fine. You can pause the video at any point and fill those gaps in. And I, I'll just reiterate it. If your animations are different, just make sure that you get the start and the end animation, right? The start of your animation and the end, that's what's important. It doesn't matter about where it is on your sequence. What matters is that your animation start and your animation endpoints are properly defined. So just as an example, if I go back to, uh, let's actually work with the attack one. So my attack animation starts at 30 and it finishes at 65, not 66, because 66 is technically the start of our miss animation, right? And we can prove that by going to the last one here. Our defend animation starts at 134 and it actually ends at 148, if, uh, 149. If we go to 150, it disappears. Right, so it's basically the length of the uh, animation strip here in your sequence minus one. So as an example here, my defend start is 134 and my defend end is 149. So if you haven't added in your sequence animations yet, 
And if you haven't added in all of these start and end information either, go ahead, pause the video and do that now. All right, I'm going to assume that you guys have finished that and add those in. One thing I did forget to mention was the player unit also needs in the create event the extra states. So for us, we have the idle states, we have the attack state miss. So when you miss your attack, when you get hurt, the to defend animation or the to defend state, which is basically um, for me, it's going to be this one here. And then we have the actual defend idle animation. So technically our character will have two idle animations. One is just the basic idle animation and the other one is when they are defending. And again, if you need to pause the video, pause it now and add this extra section in. These are all macros just in case uh, you're wondering. Um, and they're basically going to be the same as our states, right? We've already done the idle state and we're just going to expand on this a little more today. Okay, so like I said, we're going to continue on with expanding our state machine. And so we don't actually need to, actually we will, we will be referring to our um, animation start and end. But if you've already added all of this stuff in, then we don't need to do any extra typing in the object player. We're just going to be working in the parent unit here. So let's go into this step event, and I think that's enough space. Let's go ahead and add in each of the cases that we have just put into our system. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I've basically added in the, the skeleton for our, not the complete um, state machine because we haven't added in any of the skills animations yet, but we have got our, our basic skeleton in place. And that's what we're going to fill in today. So we're going to do all the code for the attack, the miss, the hurt, defend, to defend and defend animations. We still don't have, like I said, the, we don't have the death animation and we don't have the skills or the magic animations yet. Um, those will come at a slightly later date, but as long as we have the skeleton here, then that's totally fine. If you wanna add in those macros now for the death animation and the uh, magic animation, feel free to do so, but uh, I'm going to take things one step at a time here. And let's go ahead and put in the code for our case attack. So think about this for a moment. Our case attack is basically going to read if our um, head position, if we read our head position and it's at the end of the, or if it's greater than the end of our play animation, we don't want it to loop. Uh, maybe you want it to loop, but I don't want our animation to loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this line of code. We are literally going to copy and paste it down here into the attack. But instead of the idle end, we are obviously going to read the attack end. So let's go down here. If we go down here and we type in attack end, right? We've, we've changed the sequence entirely, right? So we've gone ahead and we've said, okay, with the unit sequence, if the playhead is basically at 65, no, 66, or above, sometimes it might go over, we are going to take this sequence head and move it back. We're going to take this and we're going to move it back to the idle start. At the same time, we also need to tell the sequence itself, we need to tell the state to change back into the idle state. So let's go ahead and add that in here by typing in state idle, simple as that. So like I said, once we hit the end of the attack animation, it's going to loop back to the idle as well as change the state. Because remember, if we don't have this line, then it's going to be constantly in this attack state and it's going to break the game, right? So we need to tell the actual object itself that, hey, you finished your attack animation. We need you to start playing the idle animation, but we also need to tell the object itself that your state is now also back to idle. 
All right, now for the miss animation. This one, I guess for this one, it's basically the same, right? It's the same as this one up above. We're just going to take this, we're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it down here. And then instead of idle end, we need to go to hurt, hurt end. And again, state, I can't believe I, I should have just copied the attack animation one instead, but it's basically the same concept. So when your character misses their attack, right? Because not all attacks will hit 100% of the time, but if they if they do miss, we need to tell it to say, "Hey, you need to go back to the attack uh not back to the attack state. You need to go back to the idle state." Now for hurt, we don't have a death animation yet, right? So for hurt, what we're going to do for now is basically not hurt and that should be miss end. For hurt, uh, we'll, we'll just copy and paste it as well. And of course, this one is going to be hurt end. Now, to defend and defend itself. These two are going to be different because, like I said, we need to go from to defend to, well, defend. We don't need to go back to state idle. So for this one, we're going to copy the logic but we need to, instead of changing to idle start, what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to change it to, actually no, once we get to, to defend end, which is up here, right? We've defined that there. Once our unit sequence is, the playhead anyway, is at to defend end, we are going to go down here. We're going to change the sequence uh, head position to the defend start and then instead of changing back to the idle we need to change to defend All right so that's that's basically what it is there and then for this line we're going to copy paste that again but we aren't going to change our state we want to basically continuously loop through this particular animation so not defend and not to defend end, just regular defend end, right? So if we scroll up here, we have the idle start, idle end. We have the attack. If I put some gaps here, it might be easier for you guys to read. But uh, here we go. Once we hit the defend end animation, we're going to put it back at the defend start. And then once we hit that defend end, we're going to loop it back to the defend star. And that's how we create that loop. It's basically the same as if I go back here to the step event, our defend, like I said before, is basically our idle animation. It's exactly the same. And the only difference is that through code, we are going to go from the defend animation back to the idle animation, but that will come at a slightly later date than this particular video. All right, so this is basically the, not the complete um, version of our state machine. There is still a lot that we have to add in, but we can't really do anything with that right now because we actually need to be able to control which unit is currently selected, All right? So if we have a look at that now, you guys can pause the video and copy it if you want to. Remember, what's important is that you have the correct information that you have up here, right? That your um, animation start and ends are properly defined. And don't worry about these um, warnings right now. It's because we haven't, we haven't got any control code yet to actually tell the playhead to go to the attack start. So don't worry about the warnings for now. Just make sure that when you set up your states that they behave properly. So our attack state, our attack miss hurt states will all loop back into idle, but our to defend state will go into the defend and then the defend state itself will just constantly loop. So that's, that's basically what it's going to look like. It doesn't look like much. It is very bare, but that's, that's basically it for now. If we try playing the game, all of our, our idle animations will continue to play, which is what we wanted. That's good. Um, but what we're going to do next is now that we have these animations going for us, the next step for us is to actually go back into 
if I close out those two windows, the next step that we're going to need to do is go back into the manager and we are going to set up ways to control which units currently selected so that we can give that unit some orders and we can actually get some gameplay going. But uh, we're going to do that in the next video. That's it for now, guys. Uh, thank you for subscribing, by the way. Um, all of a sudden, our subscriber count is different now, so that's very good. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.